Okay, here we are inside the 1936 Terraplane. Now I want to tell you about this. This was another thing that Hudson came out with in 1935. This was an option. This is the Bendix Electric Hand. Now there are some videos on YouTube showing the operation of this. And they were trouble prone, but if you keep on top of them, they do work. Principle behind this is you could take this floor shifter, it would unsnap, and you'd switch this unit on, and there's a, two vacuum cylinders on the transmission, and there's some electrical solenoids. Now, you have a typical H pattern on this. Now, say you want to put it in first gear. Now, put in first gear, depress the clutch, start the car up. Now, when you let the clutch out, it automatically shifts the transmission to um, first gear. Now you're driving along, put it in second. When you depress the clutch, that shift is made to second gear. Same thing with third. Now, like I said, the system did work, and it was kind of an interesting prelude to a automatic transmission. In fact, this car this particular one doesn't have it, but it, over here, there's a choke. They also had another knob that would go here. It was an optional vacuum clutch. So basically, what happened is, when you made a shift, you never had to use the clutch. The um, lifting off the accelerator pedal, the engine's vacuum would drop, or I mean, sorry, <laughs> engine's vacuum would increase, so the shift was automatically made. The clutch would activate, the shift was made. So basically, you just would shift your gears, lift off the accelerator, shift was made, shift gears, lift off the accelerator, the shift was made. We didn't even have to touch the clutch. And like I said, it was kind of a neat system, but this one did work when my dad got it, but it was trouble prone. And this transmission isn't synchronized. Synchronization wasn't popular yet in 1936. Now, synchronization is the way the gears, the, the simplified explanation, when you shift gears, they go in nice and smooth. This transmission, you got to kind of work it a little bit. When you downshift from third to second, you have to double clutch like an old truck. Basically, double clutch is you push the clutch in, shift it to neutral, give the engine a rev to bring the uh, engine speed up concurrent with the speed in the rear end, push the clutch back in, and then make your downshift. If you do that well enough, you won't get a crunch. If you don't do that well enough, it crunches going in. So, here's the spumometer. Hudson also, one unfortunate thing Hudson did pioneer, and I'm going to show you here in a second. And if you <laughs> hate these things, you got Hudson Motor Company to blame for it. The idiot lights. That was a Hudson invention. There was actually a reason for it. I talked to an old-time Hudson mechanic. This motor is not full pressure lubrication. It's got an oil pump that feeds oil to the main bearings, but the rod bearings are all dippers, like on an old Briggs and Stratton lawnmower. A lot of cars use that technology. But um, when oil pressure gauges first started becoming online in the early 30s, and companies started switching to it, one thing they added was an oil pressure gauge. Well, this motor only makes probably about three to five pounds of oil pressure. So obviously somebody who's, say, is driving around in a DeSoto or something that had a full pressure lubrication. They'll look at their oil gauge and, you know, running 30, 35 PSI oil going down the road. They got a Hudson. You're running three and a half pounds of oil pressure. Did, whoa, wait a minute. So what Hudson did was they put the idiot light in there and 
also they eliminated the uh, amp gauge. Now another interesting thing is the temperature gauge on this is an actual thermometer and it does still work. That was actually an accessory. This car is the deluxe Terraplane. The custom, the two idiot lamps actually were here and this would be a temperature gauge over here. Now up here is your wipers. They're vacuum operated which I'll tell you right now they suck. Any vac anybody's ever had a car with vacuum operated wipers when you start going up hills, accelerating, they stop. The car companies came out with double acting fuel pumps in the 40s to kind of get around that, but they're still not what an electric motor is. Now, you notice it has what looks like two glove box doors. There's reasons for that. One thing, they would ha hide the radio behind here. They also had a um, optional defroster duct that would, this would open up, it would pop out. This has an optional heater, and heaters were optional back then, and they would have a hose that would run to that. Now this car doesn't have that as an accessory. It has this little gizmo, which is just basically a defrogger fan. Now, another thing with these two glove boxes, Hudson did a fair amount of exporting. They would ship cars in what they call knockdown state, which basically were in pieces, and they were shipped to Australia, United Kingdom, South Africa, you know, countries that have right-hand drive. So this was an easy way for Hudson to save a little money. This car was very easily to convert to right-hand drive for those markets. Spamometer centered, two glove box doors. It's just a basically you're relocating the steering column and steering box to this side of the vehicle. So that's it. So I'm going to start it up here in a second. Now one thing my dad did on this car, and I just replaced it recently, these cars are prone to vapor lock, and plus with a 6 volt electrical system, they take forever to get gas pumped up. You hearing that? That's an electric fuel pump. Now I only use that to prime the carburetor or when the car starts to vapor lock on an extremely hot day, but I really don't drive it on extremely hot days anymore. It's not comfortable. <laughs> you get used to air conditioning and things like that. But another thing too with this car, it's got 411 gears with a 3-inch bore, 5-inch stroke motor that's happiest in low RPM ranges. You start getting this up to around 3,500, close to four grand, you're winding it. And I don't like to do that. So it tends to stay 45 to 50 miles an hour as a top speed. It will go faster. I've talked to old timers that would get these up close to 100, but I can't imagine. That's a Bapid bearing 6 with dippers. Uh, no. That makes me nervous. Okay, we'll press, pull the choke out. with this car hasn't been started since Mother's Day. That's not too bad. It's a little rough. Now here's a downfall of generators. And that's why they banned them. It's not going to come on. At lower RPMs, the generators don't like that. They don't make any power and the amp light will come on. And when If you're like on a, just idling this car when it's warmed up, your uh, amp light will pop on here and there. Okay, that's a little bit of the Terraplane. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, hit the like and subscribe button, and uh, have a great day.